Hi everybody, my name is John Bellamerick, and um, I will be your host for the first few of these videos. Uh, this first video is an introduction to um, the series of videos that we're doing to uh, help people learn about Nefio, what it is, and what our Release 1 uh, does, and, and how it works. Um, so uh, you will have several hosts, hopefully some other folks from the community will chip in and make some uh, additional videos, but for the first few it will be me. So what is Nephew exactly? This is just a very high level uh, mission that Nef Nephew has, and it's quite a, a mouthful, um, but I tend to break it down into three categories. Um, the what, the how, and the why. And if you read through this mission, um, you'll see that each of those is represented. Um, the what really is uh, a platform for automating the deployment of network functions and the underlying infrastructure of those network functions. So we don't we, we realize that network functions in particular are complex and they uh, have a lot of intimate ties to the underlying infrastructure. And so automating them in isolation or the life cycle deployment uh, management of the life cycle and deployment of those network functions in isolation from the infrastructure has required sort of a two tier, uh, or more tier uh, structure where um, you you know you provision all the infrastructure, but you've had to already plan out exactly what network functions are going to land on that infrastructure in order to prepare it for the network functions. So uh, Nefio uh, wants to address those things in a common way. The uh, second point in the what is to automate the management of network functions. So differentiating between deployment and management, um, here we're talking about the full life cycle, uh, where you provision it, you uh, you deploy it, uh, you manage it over time as it changes, the configuration of it changes, the capacity needs change, the underlying infrastructure changes, security patches are applied, all of these things, um, and of course eventually you turn it down. Uh, the third bullet point here on the what is really about um, not just managing an individual network function or even an individual set of network functions, but but managing an entire topology across large-scale geographically distributed edge deployments. So the idea here is that uh, a, a lot of the effort we put into Nephew isn't around how we get network function a out there and running and how we manage it over time. Yes, we spend time on that, but we actually, a, a lot of the approaches we take are really built around the idea that we need to do this at massive scale. Um, and so that means that we need to manage all of those things at massive scale. And uh, we'll talk a lot more about that in future uh, videos. And the last what here is multi-vendor cloud and network function support. So we don't want to be uh, tied to a specific network function. We don't want to be t tied to a specific set of infrastructure or cloud provider, but instead we want to be able to mix and match um, vendors. Uh, so, you know, if you're running uh, one network functions vendor's product, uh, you can swap out the cloud, underlying cloud service with, you know, not no effort, but with, with much less effort than you would than you would do uh, in today's using today's technology. Uh, similarly, if you're running one particular uh, vendor's set of functions for a particular, uh, say, a, a UPF or an AMF or an SMF, um, you could theoretically swap out other vendors, um, assuming they are interoperable. But from a management perspective, we want to be able to manage multiple different vendors' network functions within the same uh, fleet or topology. So that's a pretty ambitious set of what's. Um, so the question then is, is how? Uh, and right there in the mission, we have two really major things about the how. One is uh, that it's intent-driven and declarative. So we'll talk more about this uh, again in another video, but uh, rather than uh, a traditional sort of fire and forget, you, you say, execute this script, and it goes and provisions a bunch of stuff, and you walk away, instead, we use an intent-driven and declarative model, which says, I want the world to look like this. This is the state of the world as I want it to be. You system, you make it so. And that's the declarative aspect, and it's up to the system to figure out how to measure the current state versus the intended state. That's where the intent-driven comes from, the intended state versus the current state, and reconcile the 
uh, those intentions and make the, the, intended, the, the actual state reflect the intended state. So the other piece that's in there is uh, Kubernetes. It's right there, Kubernetes-based cloud-native intent automation. And the reason is that Kubernetes has been proven as a platform uh, in many ways uh, to successfully implement this intent-driven declarative management style. And Kubernetes has uh, a number of very powerful uh, uh, primitives that we can just leverage and we don't have to rebuild and, and make from scratch. And also Kubernetes, of course, has a, a vast ecosystem. There are literally tens of thousands of people who have contributed to Kubernetes itself and probably you know many tens of thousands who have contributed to the ecosystem of how it integrates with authentication systems, how it integrates with cloud native or with cloud uh, provider systems. And so we don't want to have to duplicate all of that. Instead, we want to leverage the work of all of those folks. Uh, lastly, the, the why. The why is there in the mission as well. Um, of course, two big whys. One is get network functions to production faster. So that doesn't sound like a big deal, but when lead times are in months or years to get a, a, a network provisioned, um, the level of agility in, in an organization, um, you know, the, the, the ability to adapt to market conditions is just not there. And so um, when we say faster, we don't mean, you know, hey, we cut it from six months to four months. No, we want to cut it from six months to, to days or hours, right? We want to cut it down dramatically. And, you know, it's ambitious, and we'll see if we can do it. And, and as a community, I think we have a real shot at it. Um, but just like when the industry, the, the tech, broader technology industry went from, um, hey, we need to provision a VM, file a ticket, and somebody, or even we need to provision a physical server, file a ticket, and somebody builds it and racks it and stacks it, and it takes six months. Um, to, hey, I can provision a VM with a click of a button and three minutes later I have a VM. It really dramatically changes the way that people uh, experiment, the way that they deliver services, the way that they um, uh, build and develop services. So we believe that that similar transition um, in uh, network service uh, and underlying network functions uh, deployment will really make a difference. And then, of course, we do want to reduce the cost of, costs of cloud adoption. Cloud uh, is very complex. Uh, the disaggregation of the, the, the full stack from um, you know, network functions that have an intimate knowledge of the physical layer that they're running on, or even our physical, um, that has real potential to, uh, to enable uh, a different kind of scaling and a um, different kind of, of development process and agility, but it's proved to be extremely difficult uh, and more costly than expected to, uh, to disaggregate. So uh, by coming up with a, um, a common framework by which all the different vendors can interoperate, uh, we believe we can reduce the costs of that adoption. So that's a very, very quick uh, description of what Nephew is and what it's all about. Um, to, to get much more in depth, we've produced uh, this series of videos and tutorials that you can go through. Um, each uh, The series is, is broken up into episodes. This is the first episode, um, and uh, there will be many more that come. Um, you can find them all at nephio.org slash learn. We will be producing those over the next several months, and we hope to keep this up actually as we go through release two and, and for future releases. So uh, please check back frequently. We'll also, of course, publish them on YouTube as well. Each episode has um, a, a, a wiki page which will describe you know, things like the prerequisites. Um, each one has a short presentation like you're seeing here, uh, a short video. We hope to keep most of these short. Some of the really in-depth ones might get quite a bit longer. Um, on the wiki page, there'll be an opportunity for Q&A. All of our wiki pages have a comment section, so um, you can ask questions there if things aren't clear. Um, and of course, each of these will also include pointers to additional resources. Um, most of them, or many of them, will also include exercises. So later, we'll build out a um, uh, demonstration environment that you can play with, um, and you can actually try out some of these concepts here. We, of course, are welcome to uh, any suggestions. We're an open source community. Uh, we really are a very open and friendly place. And we will have an episode on the community. But uh, suggestions and contributions are welcome to the video series as well as uh, anything else. 
Speaking of the community, like I said, we are an open source project. We're part of the Linux Foundation, and um, we uh, you can see here a bunch of the different resources um, on the project itself. Um, it is a really uh, open community. Uh, we welcome uh, contributions, ideas, um, and uh, would love to to see you. So please join us. For next steps, um, I would suggest you go through these episodes. There, uh, the first few aren't necessarily have to be in order, but um, I think it's probably best. The next episode will be about why we're doing Nephew, so a little bit more in depth into the why that I gave before, uh, and a little bit more about why why it's different than the pr approaches used today. Um, and then episode three will get more in depth in that approach. So what are our, our core? Some, what are the core principles? Um, more about declarative imperative and some of the other underlying technologies and after that we'll get to the demo environment you could skip straight to the demo environment a lot of people like to just get their hands dirty quickly but um, you know I think that it will help you understand why we're taking the approaches that we take uh, in the demo environment if you understand the larger goals and principles so thank you very much I hope you enjoy the series and please uh, give us feedback on the wiki uh, and uh, join the community. Thank you.